Tropical Storm Milton is about to become a dangerous and powerful hurricane and will be moving towards the state of Florida as we go into the work week. And this is expected to become a major hurricane over the next 48 hours. It could even make a run at a Category 4 hurricane before eventually making landfall in Florida on Wednesday. Dangerous storm surge, hurricane force winds, power outages, and flooding rainfall are all expected. So let's begin with what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico right now. And this is Tropical Storm Milton. Milton. It is currently sitting in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. It's really not moving right now, and it's not expected to move very fast over the next 24 to 48 hours. But as it eventually moves off to the east, it is going to be moving into a favorable environment where rapid intensification will be a possibility. What that essentially means is that we are expecting this to go from a tropical storm up to closer to a category two or three hurricane within about 24 to 48 hours. So this is expected to become a relatively intense hurricane as it eventually moves towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And and as we go into the beginning and middle of this upcoming week, this will eventually move towards Florida, where it will eventually make landfall in the state of Florida sometime Wednesday or very early Thursday morning. This is a closer view on infrared imagery. One of the biggest things that I want to point out right now is that it is not very organized right now. You'll notice the convection kind of dying out a little bit, but we do have a new burst of activity, which once this starts to wrap around this core that we have with this particular storm, it is going to eventually become more solidified, and there's not really much wind shear here. So this this will eventually rapidly intensify as we go into tomorrow and as well as into Tuesday as it moves towards Florida. Latest computer model data is showing that there is a relatively high consensus that we are going to see a landfall in Florida out of Milton. That's almost guaranteed at this point. The question really is, where will this make landfall in Florida? And you'll notice there's a wide variety of scenarios that could happen. Models are ranging anywhere from a landfall in Cape Coral, which would be really bad for those down near Cape Coral, or as far north as the Big Bend of Florida which would probably make the worst of the impacts back over in the Big Bend of Florida, and then Tampa Bay would be spared a little bit when it comes to storm surge. But a lot of the models currently are bringing this right into the Tampa Bay area, which would be worst case scenario. So we need to watch these model trends very closely over the next 24 hours, because if this makes landfall anywhere near Tampa Bay, we could be talking about a catastrophic event for Tampa where substantial storm surge and very life-threatening storm surge will be a possibility, because all that water going right into the bay is is going to be a major problem. Now, this is the latest in terms of the intensity guidance from various computer models, and just kind of pointing this out, there is a large range of what this could be near landfall in Florida. I don't think this is going to be a tropical storm or even a Category 1 uh, hurricane upon landfall in Florida. I would say a reasonable forecast for right now for the state of Florida is a Category 2 or 3 hurricane making landfall. We could still see, though, a Category 4, and I still wouldn't rule out a Category 5 hurricane making landfall, but I think that's a bit of a stretch. I think more than anything, we're going to be talking about something that makes landfall in Florida between Category 2 and 4 intensity, which is significant enough to the point where we are going to see major impacts. Now let's jump into the impacts that are expected out of Milton, and in addition to that, also talk more about when this will be making landfall. This is the GFS model tonight. It is expected to continue to intensify tonight, more than likely reaching hurricane status sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. As it moves to the east Monday, it is going to stay just north of the UK Tampa Peninsula. Notice how it intensifies rather quickly to a Category 2 and even approaching Category 3 status uh, Tuesday or Monday night, eventually going into Tuesday morning. If there is enough rapid intensification, we could see this make a run at Category 3 or 4 intensity as early as Tuesday morning. So something to really watch for down there just north of the Yucatan. We'll show you more details on that, by the way, in a moment in terms of how intense this could actually get. I think the GFS model is a hair under where I'd put it for intensity by Tuesday. Once we go into Tuesday afternoon and evening, this continues to move towards the state of Florida. One thing I want to point out to you compared to Helene, which made landfall not even two weeks ago in the Big Bend of Florida, the concentration of wind and intensity is way, way smaller. So that means the wind field out of this is going to be much smaller in nature for those in Florida. So that's good news. At least the hurricane and tropical storm force wind field will be a bit smaller for Florida. Nonetheless, we are still expecting major impacts. As we go into Wednesday morning, this is approaching the state of Florida. The GFS model has this making landfall Wednesday Wednesday morning. There are a lot of models, though, that have this much slower, that have this making landfall as late as Wednesday night or even Thursday morning. So this is a model, I would say, that's a little bit of an outlier, but nonetheless, we are going to be talking about significant rain and hurricane force winds, more than likely somewhere near the Tampa Bay area. Now, again, granted, this could still go further north or south. This is not a perfect forecast as of right now. And then as we go later into Wednesday morning and throughout the afternoon, impacts will be felt across much of central and northern Florida. And then eventually, as we go into Thursday, this 
this moves offshore. One of the biggest concerns for Thursday is that we could see more storm surge, especially along the east coast of Florida, where the winds will be coming more out of the north and northeast. So that's another thing that we need to keep in mind. Now, there's one good news part of this entire thing, and that is that there could be dry air on the back side of this hurricane, or more on the southern side of this hurricane, as we go into Wednesday. And if this particular storm is able to go far enough to the north towards the Big Bend, we could actually see this weaken very quickly before landfall, but it is a very big contingency right now. It is something that we need to monitor, because this would be the one thing that could weaken this particular hurricane as it gets closer to landfall. But it's not a slam dunk as of right now, but it is one factor that could make this a bit weaker upon landfall. Now, rainfall accumulation is going to vary on where the eye of this hurricane goes. It could again go in many places. It could go anywhere from Cape Coral all the way back over into the Big Bend of Florida. But if the eye of this hurricane makes landfall near Tampa Bay, we would see the most substantial rainfall mostly on the northern and eastern side of the hurricane. So that would be really impacting areas just along and north of Interstate 4. And then back over near Tampa and Sarasota, we would also get our fair share of 6 to 12 inches of rain. We could even see some spots pick up over 18 inches of rain in some isolated locations, which that is kind of reminiscent of what we saw with Ian. This is not, I'm not saying this is going to be a repeat of Ian, but it is something that we need to monitor in terms of the trends, because we could see some spots really get a lot of rain out of this particular hurricane, and the most of the rain would fall on Wednesday, by the way. That's at least the current thinking. Now, in terms of the wind, again, this is a much more compact and small storm in eventual hurricane. So that basically means the wind field is way smaller. This is Wednesday at 5 a.m. If you remember, Helene was way over here and we were already seeing tropical storm force winds in almost all of Florida. This time around, Wednesday morning, you'll notice the hurricane force winds just offshore back over in Daytona and Jacksonville. They're still around 15 to 25 mile per hour wind gusts. So again, there's a big you know, difference there between Helene and as well as Milton. Nonetheless, the hurricane force wind field is where the most substantial impacts will be felt. The GFS model, again, having it making landfall near Tampa and Sarasota. Again, we are not saying it is going to make landfall there, but this particular model shows that. Again, this wind field could be further north or south, depending on if the track does shift or change. As we go throughout the day Wednesday, as it moves over land, the hurricane force wind field will stay intact, meaning wherever this goes over land, we are going to see numerous to widespread power outages. So be prepared for that. You should be prepared, at least at this point, for power outages, anything like that, winds, and also storm surge. And then as we go into Wednesday night into Thursday, this moves offshore, back uh, again off to the east of Daytona Beach, there will be northeasterly flow, which will bring some storm surge into areas like Daytona and as well as Palm Bay. It's not really known yet how high the storm surge will be, but we will have more updates on that here very soon. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. We're going to have another video later today on this, and we're also going to have a live update tonight. So subscribe and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. I do want to point out that this is a hurricane model. These are made for hurricanes. So this is something that is usually relatively accurate when it comes to systems like this. By the time we go into Monday morning, this particular model has it going down to category three intensity. So really quick intensification between now and tomorrow morning. Now, again, that's not guaranteed to happen, but that's what this model thinks right now. As we go throughout the day, Monday night to Tuesday morning, this actually gets close to category five intensity just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. But here's the one thing that I mentioned earlier in the forecast that's important. Once this gets closer to Florida, we are expecting there to be some level of dry air and wind shear that will weaken this particular tropical storm slash hurricane by the time it gets here. Now, if this system does slow down enough and goes far enough to the north, I could see this weakening much quicker before landfall. This model has it weakening down, you know, by 20 plus millibars in the span of like, you know, five or six hours. That would be a big difference between, uh, you know, intensity when it makes landfall. But nonetheless, regardless of that even happening, before this makes landfall, we are still going to have very high winds offshore, which means the storm surge is still going to be a major threat, especially for the west coast of Florida. It looks like right now that Tampa Bay would be in the you know red zone, essentially, or the red alert area for substantial storm surge. And then far off to the north of that and even south of that, it still remains relatively uncertain on exactly what you guys will be seeing. Now, again, the models could change over the next 24 to 48 hours. It could also go further to the north. We could still see a landfall in the Big Bend, and we also could see a landfall as far south as areas like Cape Coral. Which that brings me back to the latest cone from the National Hurricane Center. Just notice how large the cone of uncertainty currently is. It is a very large area where this could make landfall. So again, don't put all your eggs into one basket right now, but definitely make sure that you're preparing if you're anywhere in the Florida Peninsula, because there is a pretty solid chance that we will at least have hurricane impacts somewhere in Florida as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with the worst of the impacts.
Impact's currently forecasted to be on Wednesday. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We're going to continue to post daily updates. We're going to have two videos a day and also a live stream every day from here on out up until landfall. We'll also be live for landfall. So subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live.